go back and uh, look at the most recent EU qualifier. Uh, the same four decks were played by, I think, five of the top six finishers. Yeah, you know, I considered playing Oil Rogue, but I don't have, I don't have Edwin, unfortunately. All right, we see turn one flame in from Cigar. This is gonna be a zoo versus this uh, Silence Druid that Doombot's been playing all night. He's like, why? I'm like, you're not here. No, don't you remember the time? All right, we're gonna see a turn one Zombie Child by Doombot, which is an excellent answer to this flame imp. It's gonna go ahead and take care of it nicely. Uh, it's a guard's turn. Yeah, we're just gonna see the haunted creeper hit the field, and he's gonna punch his three to the face before it gets traded off. Uh, for Doombot's turn, I'm not sure what Cigar's considering yet, but okay. And now we'll go ahead and see Doombot. He's gonna drop a. He's gonna just drop his ancient watcher. Uh, setting himself up for this silence combo whenever he can enable the pieces for it. Uh, I don't know if you actually silence it next turn. He might, depending on what gets played, though. Yeah, the meta. We'll see. Uh, it's looking like a Franz Brombeard just punch face. Uh, it's going to be a good swipe in a few turns. Yeah, he's going to coin the silence at four five so he can clear this brain off. I must safeguard the life. Here's the brand. That, uh, that leaves the guard with an interesting turn. Uh, he's definitely going to be able to at least clear the 4 3. And Handsome Mechano comes down. Um, probably going to see. I See, I'm not sure if you want to play the Knife Juggler here. Um, well, no, I, I guess you definitely want to play it because of uh, you're going to at least get to juggle two knives off the spider. Uh, you just need one of them to hit. Unfortunately, you are conceding the fact that that knife juggler will get traded in this 2-4. Unless you have some really good RNG, but... I don't know. I, I don't know you take the risk there. Yeah, and the first one needed to land, so... It's uh, let's see where these two did. One there. And one of the face. Yeah, so we got the one trade, so this will at least get traded out. But uh, the swipe's, swipe's gonna take it up, so... Leaving the 2 3 on the board. And so uh, the Warlock player with not a lot of cards here. And not a lot of answers. And we see the Imp Gang boss come down. And the Druid has, at this point, uh, yeah, he's just going to taunt up this Druid of the Claw. He also could play the Fell Reaver this turn. I think that's why he's hovering this Druid, is because he's considering whether or not he just wants to go for the Fell Reaver. But, Looks like he's just going to taunt up this druid. That way he can get a clean trade out of the 2-4. And we'll see what Cigar wants to do. Unfortunately, because of uh, that power overwhelming draw, he can't get another minion. He really would have liked another 1-drop, or at least a solid 2-drop, to put out to either play with the DOA or drop on the Enhancer Bacano. So As is, we're going to see a life tap. Uh, he's got the Nerubian Egg. Uh, we may see a power overwhelming on the imp just to clear this 4 6 out. I'm sure he's definitely considering it. And it looks like he's going to commit to that, so we'll see a power overwhelming on the imp gang boss. It's going to get that trade here, get a minion, and then. So he's got at least one, two ways in hand to activate this new Ruby and Egg to hopefully get some value out of it in the coming turns. Uh, back to Doombot's hand. Uh, he's got a he's got an interesting turn here. He's probably either going to use the two three to trade, or he might use the hero power. If he uses the hero power, then he'll probably just play both of his two drops, or possibly even the four drop. But it's not very good on this board with the egg and no silence. So it looks like we are just going to see a hero power uh, play both his two drops. I like this too because this establishes a lot of uh, minions on the board. Since he is playing this uh, silence variant, I do believe he still plays. Yes, he does. He does play Force of Nature Savage Roar, so this will help enable a Force of Nature Savage Roar in the next two turns, assuming that the Darnassian Aspirin stays alive and doesn't reset his mana. Yeah, the Fell Reaver is most likely coming out next turn. We're gonna see the double buffs here. We're gonna see him punch down the Starnassian Aspirin, taking his mana back down to six. 
which is relevant just because it puts it one more turn off combo. And back over to Doombot, he's going to go ahead and trade this uh, Keeper of the Grove into an Abusive Sergeant. After that, though, where the rest of his mana goes, I think we're going to see the Eerie statue into the Sun Fury, and then we're going to drop the Zombie Chow on the outside so you don't have to taunt it up. Let the big 7, 7, and 4, 5 play taunt. So, Guard's in a bit of a uh, tricky situation here. I think you. Lothab isn't very effective here because you're not really looking to shut your opponent out of spells. It puts a solid body on the board, but because it's a five mana, you, uh, five mana card, you can only play so one more card with it or tap. You have to make your decision unless you tap into a one drop. But it looks like we're gonna see the Direwolf Dark Peddler and then Handsome Cano for full value here. Um, of those three cards. I feel like in this situation, you either take the Mortal Coil because you need to cycle and play a little bit more removal, or you could just take the Shield Bearer if you just need to play defense for a little bit. But since his board isn't very threatening, we're going to see him pick up the Mortal Coil for the Mortal Trades. And then I have to imagine we're going to see an Enhancer Mechano here after he trades this egg in. The R, and let's see what happens. We get a lot of stuff on the board. Okay, we got the Divine Shields on the 5-4 and the 3-3. Three, three. That helps out a lot. That gives us a free trade there. And we've got a Wind Furied up Dark Peddler. Alright, Doombot's turn. Uh, his only two plays are a 7-7 seven, seven that can't attack, or an 8-8 eight, eight that burns a bunch of his cards. That being said, you probably at this point have to go ahead and commit the 8-8. Eight, eight. Uh, your opponent doesn't have that many cards that he can play in a turn. You do have to expect that you're probably going to get milled for about 6-9 to nine here, though, if you're willing to commit it to board. And... Uh, well, this, is, this is an annoying board to have to trade with because of that Divine Shield, but... You have to play the 8-8 at this point. Uh, playing another 7-7 that can't attack is going to win you this game and close it out any quicker. And eventually, since you're not drawing any cards, Zoo will just overpower you with the Swarm. Alright, this turn we're going to see a bunch of implosion trading shenanigans. I don't know where this goes. All right, um, you have to imagine, how would you trade this off best? Probably implosion into the 7-7, seven, because seven, you at least need to clear this out so you can start swinging. And let's see, does he get the lucky four roll? No, he's the unlucky two roll. Given that he got the unlucky two, he's probably going to trade the Nerubian and Immortal Coil for the card draw. Which is good, another three cards off the top. You are definitely making mill a uh, win condition the farther, the farther, the farther you build him. Down to 12 already. So we're going to see him go to 9 here and then 8 on his draw step. The board will be clear, and there's going to be this annoying, annoying taunt on me. And I have to imagine that you use your 3-2 to trade with the 2-1 here. That way you keep this 8 damage off your face even longer. And keep the mill going, because mill is very quickly starting to become an option. Uh, one more card played next turn, and Doombot will actually be in. Yeah, if he gets if he gets to play three cards next turn, he will actually push him already to mill, to uh, milling one at a time, which means the last two cards in his hand that you're seeing are going to be the only cards he gets to play. And since Eerie Statue can only attack when it's the last minion on the board. Ah, uh, and there it is. There's the Knife Juggler pickup. So this is a pretty simple turn. I don't think you hear a power at all. I think you just Knife Juggler and drop all the cards and let the mill start taking place. Yeah, because when, when you burn your whole opponent's hand out like this, not only is he going to start taking incremental damage, but you've also taken all of his options that we can just do. I think Doompot's going to realize very quickly that he actually doesn't have a way to close this game out because this Fell Reaver will get traded in the next turn. On top of that, Sigurd already has uh, 11 points of damage, so he's looking pretty close to lethal if he draws a, uh, a Taunter, but it looks like Doompot is 
I actually don't agree with that here. I think you have to put the 8 damage to the face if you have any hope of winning this game. Not that you can do. Unfortunately, this game is already over. Well and Doombot's realizing it now. Goes ahead and throws out the well played. Uh, I don't know if he's going to concede here, but he does not have a way to come back into this game since the 7-7 seven -seven will never be able to swing. Why do you fall? And with Savage Roar being the last card in hand, that uh, will do it. No, you can't mill past uh, zero because the text on Fell Reaver doesn't say uh, discard three cards. It specifically says, uh, or I, I forget the exact wording are, but it, it can only burn cards that you actually have in your deck. Yeah. Yeah, no fun at all. You can't just keep pushing past it. Uh, it does take the downside a bit. Uh, it does decrease the hindrance. Just because you can't get milled really hard by it, otherwise I think Fell Reaver would never be playable. Just because you would be able to just blow them up. All right, so we have a uh, cigar taking an early lead, 1-0 uh, to the series. We'll see what deck he queues up. I have to question whether or not uh, Doombot is going to go ahead and play that Druid deck again. No, it looks like Doombot has made a switch to his Warlock. He's playing Reno. Yeah, he's, gonna, he's playing his Reno variant. And uh, Sigurd is playing, surprise, surprise, Secret Paladin. The deck of the, deck of the last eight months. <laughs> yeah, nobody knows about the Secret Paladin. Just everybody on the ladder for eight months straight. We all know the pain. The deck's not even fun to play. Alright. Doombot... Doombot's got a nice turn. Yep. Alright, we're going to And this is a really slow start for the... Yeah, this is a really slow start for the Secret Paladin over here. Nothing too exciting. He's not really going to have a play until... Uh, I mean, he can he can commit the avenge. Um, seems like he's holding on to it. He'll at least get to hero power this turn. But really, as a secret paladin, since you are playing such a strong aggro deck, you expect to be doing more than. I mean, really, he's not doing anything. That's the problem. As the aggro deck, you can't wait until turn three to uh, coin out a pilot of treader. He's just taking too much damage. Even though the. Uh, the zombie child will heal him back for five, and Divine Favor is a really bad pickup here, unfortunately, if we'll hurt so hard. Because at this point, it doesn't look like Reno Lock's going to be below him in cards for quite a while, and Doombot picks up Reno right off the top, and that may just seal this game. It's going to be very hard for uh, Cigar to deal with that Reno, especially because he did not have any early pressure, so the first time he actually does find himself in pressure, and, uh, uh, he's just going to get to heal himself back up. Uh, the Doctor Six is a nice pickup at this point, but uh, it's it's not a very nice pickup for this hand since he still has nothing he can play here. And again, just spending the next turn hero power. Uh, he has loath at one turn five, but five turns in is not where you want to be playing your first real threats. We're gonna see how self culture comes in here. May see with the weapon pickup, we may see it get weaponed. Uh, alternatively, he just does commit Lothab, and you know, it looks like he, he wants to commit the weapon instead, so we're going to see the weapon trade into the Sledge Belcher, token, and if he wants to play the he wants to leave it off, that way he gets the extra revenge out of the deck when he plays the Mysterious Challenger. Now, this is, generally speaking, the correct way to play it, but that can backfire on occasion when you do happen to draw your extra double secrets, in which case you get to play neither of them when you get to play the Mysterious Challenger on turn six. I have no time for games. And, okay, we see Sylvanas come down. Oh, Sylvanas is actually really good for Doombot. It's going to contest this board really heavily. Not when he drops the concentration, but so he's gonna concentration. Okay. He feels him up to 23, he's gonna go up to 25 and back down to 20. So this is good, he finally has a clear stabilizer. He's gonna either get to the Doctor Dream or Mysterious Challenger next turn. But 
It still is unfortunate because uh, he really is just losing so much initiative, and we're gonna see Doctor Boom come out from the bottom himself here. Doctor Boom himself shield a mini bot off the top. Uh, we have to imagine Cigar is either gonna match him here. Or he's gonna play the Mysterious Challenger. Uh, I have to imagine you have to match Dr. Boom here just because of the Mysterious Challenger. Uh, really doesn't mean very much in this board state. You don't really have enough minions, and the Boom bots are just gonna get to trade around. Uh, really? Is it the conceited? Oh, wow. Frost Mage and a Control Warrior. Oh, that's an unfortunate matchup. All right, so we see the we see the Doctor Boom come back down for a guard, and so he's up one L already. <laughs> he actually gave one match. All right, looks like uh, Team Pot's considering what he wants to play here. Definitely going to see this BGH come down and take out this Doctor. It's one of the only targets for it in the entire deck, deck besides an advanced on top. And we're going to see Defender Vargas taunt up, and he's going to go for the face, and this point the game probably close this out pretty easily. And the Paladin really is in a very reactionary class uh, when it's built in the secret form, so it doesn't really have a lot of answers here. I think the best thing you can really do is hope for some crazy boombot RNG because none of your other cards have any real impact on the board. I wonder. Uh, you could drop a mysterious challenger, trade one of the boombots, it needs to clear the 2 3, trade another one to clear the BGH, and then you're barely alive. I wonder. Okay, two to the face. Ooh, for Dr. Boom. Yeah, that's unfortunate. And that is going to end the first game. Not the first game. We bring the first game to an end with. Or, sorry, not the first game. Our well played. I'm second well or third. Can't even remember. The victory is yours. Do you believe it is now? Yeah, it's two, two, one, doom bot, two cigars. So doom bot on series one right here, playing his third deck, which is his secret paladin deck. So we will see either secret paladin into a secret paladin mirror matchup or Secret Paladin into Sigurd's third deck that we have not seen. Mistaken, Dubot didn't win the Druid game. Well, in that case, it looks like we're going to see a Druid v. Druid mirror match here. Let's see. Dubot considering how to keep his hand here. He's considering since he's already seen all of the cards in the deck whether or not they're very good. Uh, Living Roots and Wrath are okay early to contest, but really you're looking for Wild Growth, and he does happen to hit Wild Growth off the top, so he's going to get to establish the 2 one one stack here. Yeah. He's trying to get to accelerate his curve. Meanwhile, Doombot, he does have the Zombie Child to at least help trade off these tokens early. Uh, Innervate off the top for Sick Hard. You have to imagine that the... Uh, the hero power trade is slightly more attractive now with the innervate now that uh he won't be quite as off curve if he doesn't play the wild curve this turn or the wild growth rather hmm. that does seem to be what cigar is considering is he's considering whether or not the two three is better to trade off this point or if he would rather just accelerate his curve on this given turn um I think I'm actually in favor of trading this here just because he doesn't really need to 
He doesn't really need to accelerate next turn specifically because he already knows he has a guaranteed uh, bear coming down. That is the decision he's, like he's going to make, so he's going to trade us out here. I wait for no one. I think that next turn he's going to have the innervate bear. <laughs> I'd pick us up another statue off the top. We're just gonna see if we can hard pass that thing. It's gonna really have anything exciting for a few turns. Back to Cigar. Uh, Force of Nature, not a great pickup, but not a bad pickup either. He'd rather see things early, but it'll help uh, the whole thing later. See if you're down there for him. Nice big old 4 6. It's gonna be a little hard for Doombot to contest for her. At least until he finds a silence, because he can coin these eerie statues, but he can't actually do anything to them until he finds the silence. Meanwhile, Cigar really hasn't picked up anything for himself for that matter. Uh, we may see a wild growth and then. We'll see if he just decides to hero power, if he wants to just wrath the cycle at this point. You have to consider that uh, Wrath may almost be worth playing, even though it really has no effect on the board stage, just because you need cycle cards at this point as the druid. Or as a cigar playing his combo druid, rather. And we are going to see both these minions get taunted up. It's going to leave him in an interesting place. So we're definitely. Definitely looks like we're going to see the bear go into the 4 5 and Wrath for 1 to cycle. Uh, how you really do with the 7-7 seven, seven next turn, is, that's more of the trick. Uh, he needs to find a swipe here. He needs to find a way to generate a lot of damage. Uh, it's like more of not quite what we were looking for, but... At least help accelerate his turn, where he's currently in combo. Uh, at this point, still hoping, I guess, to pick up the swipe to clear this 7-7 seven, seven out, or really just any minions at this point. Uh, so Guard's had a very weak early game just because he suffered from drawing no minions. With the uh, double wrath, double wild growth, and then the force of nature, savage roar combo, he's seen six of his spells and about ten cards. And for a minion-centric mid-range deck like Druid, where you want to establish much more presence for a combo later on, that, uh, that isn't very great. We do see, uh, we do see the Savage Roar coming down, and the big mind swing out of the, uh, of the Yuri statue since the Druid was cleared off the board, the Druid of the Claw. Back to Cigar, we see him pick up a Piloted Shredder. Uh, Piloted Shredder's good here. It's at least a minion to establish on the board. Uh, it's not the greatest pickup, obviously, but really he just needs any cards at this point that he can play that are actually minions that will stick on the board. And since Piloted Shredder, when it dies, does spawn the two drop, it will at least help him keep something on the board for a few turns. Meanwhile, well, Doombot, I mean, Doombot, Doombot's definitely, uh... Oh, wow. Yeah, and he picks up the Wailing Soul, so we're definitely going to see the secondary statue come down here. Oh, uh, we're going to see that come down, or we're going to see Hero Power to the face. And... This could actually just be game next turn. Uh, not quite actually be short. Few points of damage. Well, we see another we see another force of nature come out. So we have to imagine one of the force of nature is going to be played here. There really is no point in holding on to the second one, so you probably, uh, yeah, go ahead and force a nature. He's gonna trade two into the Eerie statue, then he'll trade one with the zombie child to clear it to, uh, regain his five health back. Which will allow Doombot a free turn again to decide what he wants to do. Probably draw two cards, unless he has a play that he'd rather make on seven mana. Which, Druid in any incarnation incarnation really doesn't have anything better on turn seven than to just draw two cards off an ancient war. Time waits for no one. You see this in setting he up to the same girl power and have to trade on the zombie chow here. Just bring him back up to two three. See, ooh, King Muckle comes down. So let's see a 5 5. He's gonna give his opponent two bananas. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm actually gonna kill the actual king. Let's 
the, the Wailing Soul Slash. He's gonna start pressuring with 7-7. Seven, seven. Oh no, he's actually gonna decide to trade. I like the trade there. Uh, this is hard though. He doesn't really have a lot going for him. Even uh, even taunting his Druid up. Uh, you can taunt the Druid and buff it. That's probably all you really can do is just hope to at least get a uh, at least get a two for one out of it. But you could even charge the Druid of the Claw here into the seven five to guarantee that you get the kill here. If you're that concerned about it, uh, I guess you also have the opportunity to force a nature savage or a combo to clear most of the board. Not all of it, but a decent portion of it at least. Would be able to clear everything except the wailing souls and the wailing souls would be a three one, I believe. Where it looks like we're gonna double the uh, this is a little more defensive, and if your opponent draws a keeper from the back of the silence, uh, you get punished very heavily here. For the but otherwise, it's definitely the safest of his plays. And I guess uh, Cigar does have to consider that this Force of Nature Sap drawer probably is the only way he's going to win this game. And since it's the only way for him to get back into this game, he has to uh, play with it very sparingly and can't just use it to clear, even though this is quite a scary board. See Ancient Allure come down, draw two. And looking for Living Roots, doesn't get to pick up, but he's gonna try to do this from his end. And so let's go. And we've got double Savage Drawer, so now all we're looking for is the Innervate. If he can draw Innervate next turn and there's no Taunt up, then he actually could close this game out with a double Force, uh, or double Savage Drawer Force of Nature combo for 22. Hmm. But that's completely uh, contingent on one, him drawing Innervate, and two, a taunt not coming down. And it's like, we're just thinking this over right here, whether or not he actually wants to just go ahead and drop his first Force and Nature combo into uh, to Doombot's phase, or at least trade with it. And you definitely have to think about trading at this point. Looks like he's just gonna put one to the face. Um, Toombot picks up the Innervate. Uh, not really needed here at this point in the game. This is pretty simple for him to close out from here. In fact, I do believe he has lethal. Yes, he does. If he charges both Toombots, then he will have lethal here. Oh, play. that's going to close the game out. So that will be... I do believe that finish this is the series of Toombot have one more game to go. Okay, we do have another match, it looks like, so I do believe that that was, uh, Doombot 2-1. Uh, going into a Secret Paladin here. I the will Dread Secret Paladin against the other will Dread Secret the Paladin. Uh, Secret Keeper is an exceptionally good card in this matchup. For whichever Paladin gets to put it down first, especially if you play on turn one, because it really limits your opponent to playing secrets for their uh, their first and second turns. I see the no Noble Sack to start here. Uh, looks like we're probably going to see a Secret Keeper coin of I'll down. never tell. Unless he would rather hold on to it. Yep, looks like he'd rather hold on to it. Put this apple on your head. And we see Doombots and Secret Keeper coming down. Put this uh, apple see on your head. So we're gonna have to imagine we're gonna see a yeah, coin bench here. Offer to make the trade here, but he will realize that this is a sacrifice. Ooh, bad land on the map. Trade juggler, and then now we're gonna see muster. Reporting for duty. Reporting for duty. Reporting for duty. The lucky knives hit, and puts more damage to the face. Unless I'm mistaken, the secret. Yeah, we got a finish down here. 
here, so. Not a whole lot of action on the mustard. But we'll probably see a lot of these minions get cleared away by just the eyes flying from the juggler. Oh, we could see him clear one, the Avenge proc, and then we see a Aldor Peacekeeper take the weapon to a 4 3 back down to a 1 3. It does look like that's what he wants to do. I like that play here at this point. You're trying to keep, uh, you're trying to keep your tempo and keeping that down to a 1 3 because you're going to do some terrible trades. You see the Secret Keeper gets another juggle and it looks like he's going to do Yep, keep the points. This is actually a really good consecration, fortunately. It's gonna clear the entire board. And his opponent is actually a good uh, Probably an exceptionally good hand. He might have to jump out now, board. Yeah, in fact, at this point, I think you do do that. I think you probably play the stomp, stomp your hero power to get your 1-1 one, one, and then turn its attack and reporting the all the way. But it's good to know, especially when you into it like after 6 turn. Uh, so Guard picks up his own Doctor 6, but unfortunately without the money he's going to be one turn. We are going to see a fun to try to revenge because... Do go ahead and drop it. Which this is pretty impactful, especially because uh, uh, I don't agree with the weapon trade at all there actually by Doom Bot because you know if your opponent has a Doctor Six, which he actually does here, uh, if the guard is inclined to play that, then now he doesn't have an efficient way to clear the two one noble sacrifice and proc it. If he had uh, if he'd actually been able to clear the two one noble sack, then Based on how this turn is going to play out, it's entirely feasible he would have had lethal off of the Avenge and the uh, Competitive Spirit set up next turn. Looks like he's going to opt for Cog Hammer here though, and I am going to do nothing. Yeah, you can't, you can't uh, actually play the minions in this position, as sad as it is, just because you really don't want to see your opponent, uh, you really don't want to see them pull out. Reporting to duty. Where's the bench proc? And does it hit the totem goal? It does. So we see a 6-6 six, six totem goal. And Doombot is going to go ahead and trade that 6-6 six, six down. Well, he's considering it anyway. I think it's equally valid for him to punch face here. Yeah. Just take the hero power, given that he has the uh, blessing of He knows he's coming right up to the end of this game. He's got most of the damage, since his opponent actually can't play a Tyrion this turn. And Spard knows he really can't attack any of this board either, since the noble sacrifice is there. Change his face to check it. So it gets thrown. Not that it really matters if this game is at this point over, because Cigar does have uh, well played. Many ways to put three damage on. Well played. Redemption. Even with the uh, Mysterious Challenger coming down, giving him the noble sacrifice, the sacrifice unfortunately is going to be even with his damage. Not of your business. Job done. And we even see the pens. The victory is yours. And that will be game two, but we'll go ahead and close out the series three to one. Well